So this is a propaganda photo shoot for a subway system in China. Watch closely. So what did that nonsense have to do with this? And more importantly, what does any of this have to do with the earthquakes that have devastated parts of Turkey and Syria? Well, quite a lot, as you'll find out. Coffee shops these days are kind of more like offices than coffee shops, let's be honest. While you sit in there slurping down a delicious latte, people are doing serious business. We're talking about meetings, sending off emails, doing very important stuff online. And this is all well and good, but we have to talk about the big security risk that comes with this. That's why I'm happy to work with today's sponsor, Guardio. Finally, an incredibly easy to use and very efficient browser plugin that blocks malicious attacks before they even happen. You may not realize it, but the majority of our interaction with the internet is through our browsers. They store our passwords, banking credentials, as well as our habits and uh, maybe sometimes dodgy histories. In other words, the last things you'd like to end up in the hands of a cybercriminal or a scammer. This is why Guardio is such an important extension. Guardio is your shield against phishing attempts, malware, scam sites, and pop-ups. It will also notify you in real time about information leaks connected to you. Once you've installed it, Guardio will run a security scan to detect any existing threats. This could be a real wow moment. It certainly was for me, as it will show you what information of yours is already at risk or compromised. After this initial scan, you'll have a 7-day free trial in which to remove these threats and enable real-time protection. Guardio's identity protection is also cross-platform, giving you real-time alerts on your mobile of data breaches and leaks so that you can act immediately. So uh, what are you waiting for exactly? Go to guard.io forward slash serpentza and install Guardio. It takes 30 seconds to install and one Guardio account covers 5 family members. Even your grandma who keeps thinking that Nigerian princes are going to send her a whole whack of cash. Join over 1 million people who have already installed Guardio today by visiting guard.io forward slash serpentza. Link is in the description below and you'll get 20% off their already affordable monthly subscription. And now back to the show. So what kind of embarrassing nonsense is the Chinese government up to this time? Hmm. Well... Turning a tragedy into an Olympic sporting event is one thing. Let's get into this. All right. First of all, I just have to get this out of the way. Tragedy. Whenever tragedy strikes, the noblest thing to do is to help out. If you can physically help out, if you're actually there to help out, no matter what the tragedy is, a car accident, uh, an earthquake, uh, anything, someone drowning in the water. If you can help out, if you can reach out and do something and you do it, that's noble. If you're not there to physically do it, sending supplies or sending financial aid or whatever it is, if you could do that, that's noble. That's the right thing to do. That's the humanitarian thing to do. And if you don't have the means to send anything, sending your emotional support, whether it be through sending condolences or prayers or whatever the case, that too is a noble humanitarian thing to do. Jumping on a tragedy and trying to use it to further your narrative and to further your political clout, that is disgusting behavior. And this is something we've seen. And I clearly, clearly before I get into this, want to draw a line once again between the Chinese government and the people of China. And the reason I'm saying this is I've had some of my Chinese friends and some of my friends in China right now reach out to me and tell me, that they're really upset about what's been going on as far as the, the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. And they wanted to assure me that they and their friends have been raising funds and have been sending what they can. And of course they are. It's not bullshit. It's not made up. But the behavior of the government is what's irking them and what's irking me and should irk you too. 
Now, the way I'm going to talk about the events surrounding what happened here might sound a little callous. I have to take a step back and remove myself from the actual tragedy that's happened. It's just off the charts. The, the human cost of this earthquake has been appalling. Uh, one thing that's been a fantastic respite to this is the stories of people being rescued and the uh, very human stories of fathers protecting their children and mothers protecting their children and sisters and brothers protecting each other and uh, just the struggle of people surviving and uh, coming out of this rubble has been incredibly heartwarming. And once again, shone a light on humanity and, you know, the the fact that we are all humans and we are all in this life together and we should, if at all possible, help each other out. But like I said, I'm going to take a step back. As soon as the earthquake hit, of course, the volunteer rescue forces kicked into high gear around the entire world. All countries that could send in volunteers and rescue workers and aid did do so. Now, specifically for China, this was a great opportunity for them. And that's because, as we all know, China's kind of a little bit under the spotlight right now with its spy balloon that it flew over the United States and various other little mix-ups that have been happening. So it's a very welcome distraction for them to focus on in order to take some of the heat away from their present bad actions. And I believe this is what's led to this terrible dog and pony show that we're going to talk about here. You see... When China sends its volunteers, it's more like volunteer diplomacy. If you look at the way it's been done, it's not about going there to help rescue lives and save lives. It's going there to show, look at how great China is. Look at how amazing we are. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of this. You see, the Hong Kong rescue team arrived first. Now, we all know the situation with China and Hong Kong is a little bit complicated. Hong Kong was handed back to China, but, you know, it still is its own country for all intents and purposes. Still has its own currency, its own laws, kind of its own border. It's, you know, everything's a bit different, but it does fall under China. So they arrived first, but they were forced to wait 10 hours before they were allowed to go out and rescue anyone. 10 hours. Now, do you know why they were forced to wait 10 hours? It's because they had to wait for the mainland Chinese contingent to arrive and they had to wait for a flag raising ceremony. In other words, raising up the Chinese flag and singing the Chinese national anthem for the cameras. They had to wait for that to all be done before they were allowed to go out and rescue people. Now, I got to tell you, when you're in a situation like the whole Turkey earthquake situation where people are being crushed to death under rubble, 10 hours is the difference between life and death. If those Hong Kong rescue workers who were there, ready, equipped, ready to go out into the field to go and help people and rescue people, if they were allowed to go out as soon as they had arrived, instead of having to wait around for this stupid flag raising ceremony and singing the national anthem for the cameras bullshit, many more lives would have been saved. Now, that's not me making something up. Anyone who's worked in any kind of emergency situation knows that time is your biggest enemy. So that's number one blunder. And of course, why was it done? It was done so that China could look great and look like they're coming in there and with their flag and all that crap. Now, speaking of flags, this is the next big issue. People have been complaining about this. The Chinese rescue groups have been planting the national flag of China in rescue zones all over. And what they do is they go to a site where there are rescue workers from all different countries and they'll go and put their flag down as if they've landed on the moon or as if they've conquered a new country or a continent or something. And then they'll go help out with the rescue work. It's incredibly unnecessary and in many ways insulting because they try to claim ownership of the rescue operation by having their national flag flying there. We're not seeing the same thing happen with other nationalities. We're not seeing like an American flag planted in the uh, rubble over there while you've got multinational rescuers all working together. This combined with the absolute shameless promotion of this event, of these rescue events, by the Chinese officials on Twitter and other social media is disgusting. Miracles happen under the five-star red flag. What an audacious thing to say. 
This has got nothing to do with that stupid flag. It's got everything to do with the rescue workers rescuing that girl. This kind of arrogance is absolutely disgusting. I mean, I can think of a lot of things that have happened under that five-star red flag that are far from miracles. Every single time somebody's rescued and a Chinese rescue worker happens to be in the vicinity, they've been posting it as if it's some kind of victory. Now, please don't misunderstand me here. I'm incredibly grateful for any Chinese rescue worker that has aided in rescuing anybody because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing here is that people are rescued. The most important thing is that people are receiving aid and help and any kind of assistance that they can get right now. And good on the Chinese rescue workers for helping out. But it's so tasteless the way that the Chinese officials have been portraying this situation. In fact, most of the photos that they've been sharing, it looks as if the Chinese rescue workers have photobombed them. There'll be like an international rescue effort and there'll be a single Chinese rescue team member happens to be in the photo and China claims victory for this rescue tries to take ownership. And that's the tasteless thing here, is it's not about which countries rescued who, it's about rescue workers rescuing people. They haven't mentioned any other rescues that have been taking part. It's only if there happens to be a, a Chinese rescue worker nearby that they suddenly claim it as if China has helped out so much and it's China's, China's the reason that this person was rescued. You can read between the lines very clearly here. Now this escalated to even greater heights with the Chinese consul general out of Belfast tweeting that a bridge that was built by the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative survived the earthquakes to show the strength of the Chinese construction, I suppose, and the friendship between Turkey and China. Turns out that this bridge was like a thousand kilometers away from the earthquake anyway, and that it had nothing to do with China. It was built by Korea. And it wasn't only her, it was also the French uh, Chinese consul, consulate tweeted out the same thing about this bridge surviving. See how good the, the Chinese bridge is that it can survive this earthquake. It's infuriating, like I said, because that bridge has nothing to do with China and it's got nothing to do with the earthquake. But it's this whole idea of uh, boosting China's image on the backs of a tragedy. We saw this countless times during the COVID lockdowns and the COVID pandemic in China. We had these ridiculous scenes where they'd park a truck a couple of hundred meters away from the entrance of a building and then create like a, a human chain of people passing food packages or supplies of some kind down these long chains to reach the door to show this concerted effort and how amazing the rescue workers are and the healthcare workers were and how much hard work they were putting in. Meanwhile, of course, they could have driven the truck just up to the door there's an empty road there and they're only doing it for optics, doing it for the camera. And that's what the Chinese government does, is to them, the image of something is more important than the thing itself. In other words, the, uh, the, the image that something is being done or that something can be done is more important than the thing actually being done or even the possibility that that thing could be done in the first place. And I'll go back to that uh, initial video I showed you in the subway of them pretending that the, the disabled guy was disabled and he's not. China has some of the most terrible accessibility for disabled people. It's almost non-existent. I'm not making this up. If you travel from Hong Kong where you see, you know, access to disabled bathrooms and you see wheelchair ramps everywhere and all this kind of stuff, just going to Shenzhen, which is a first tier city in China, you'll see all of that stuff disappears. I mean, occasionally they try to make some sort of propaganda to show that, hey, yeah, we, we also can do disabled, you know, uh, stuff here. And uh, this is a great example, this picture where they just whip out a camera and take a photo of a ramp into a bus where there's a pole in the middle and it's impossible for you to get that person on the bus. But, you know, hey, they took the picture to show that, hey, you know, we too have uh, ramps for disabled people and that's good enough. Propaganda done. Let's not actually address the problem. And that's it. That's China in a nutshell. That's the Chinese government in a nutshell is show something. And as long as you've shown it and as long as people in their mind have a perception that you can do it, then you don't even need to bother doing it. In conclusion, the Chinese government has once again proved it cares more about its own image than it does about people in need. 
And I'm not just talking about the people that are currently in serious need, these earthquake victims and survivors. I'm talking about the Chinese people themselves. The Chinese government really does only care about its outward image. And this is not a country that we should be supporting and investing in and, uh, you know, engaging with until things change. I mean, they just sent a spy balloon through the whole of the United States and many other countries, 40 other countries, for goodness sake, and then claimed when they were caught out that, oh, no, America sends balloons over us, too, without factoring in the fact that the jet stream only goes one way. Those balloons can't float all the way from America up there. It doesn't work like that. But, you know, hey, uh, who needs logic when you're a Chinese official, huh? The CCP really is like that school bully who just wants to claim everything, claim they're great at everything, and uh, they're never wrong, and every, it's always everybody else's fault. It's, a, it's getting very, very tiring, and it's incredibly tiring and insulting when they jump on tragedies. They jump on the uh, anti-Asian hate tragedies all the time. They jump on the mass shooting tragedies all the time. They've been jumping on this Ohio chemical um, Trail, train derailment thing. Man, have they been going off. If you could read Chinese internet, you'd have no idea how much rubbish they're spewing, as if it's the next Chernobyl and everybody's dying and being murdered in America because of this thing. It's, pfft, it's just absolute craziness. Um, this is a wacky, wacky, unstable, weird sort of a government that we're dealing with here. So uh, I, I really hope you learned something from this video, guys. Don't be like the Chinese government and try to take credit for the good work of others. Don't be like the Chinese government and use tragedy for your own narrative and your own political gain. And uh, stay awesome. Most important thing on a bike trip, beer.